Hey guys, welcome to this week's episode. You're watching this for the first time. My name is Sofian and welcome to my channel. So for this week, as you can tell, I'm not in my kitchen. I'm taking a break at the moment and I'm in Spain. And this place is called the end of the world in Finisterre. I hope I said it correctly. So I just want to share with you guys you know, on this special episode behind the scenes what I do in my supper club. So if you are in Lisbon, why not head out to meet up and join my Sawi Session Supper Club and come and join some of my events. It's more than just food, uh, sharing Sawi Session food. You need Sawi Session food that's not served in restaurants in Lisbon, but also we share some stories about the food influences. So as you guys know that I, you know, I, I do supper clubs over here in Lisbon and also I do some pop-up events. But I want to share with you guys what I actually do for some of the, how I plan those big events. So I thought I'd take you through this special episode to share a little bit of background and so how I plan these events. So without further ado, let's get started. I recently teamed up with the local Portuguese chef, Chef Ricardo. We curated a dining series entitled Luso Nusantara. Luso is the late Latin prefix for Portugal and Portuguese, while Nu Santara refers to the Malay archipelago, namely Malaysia, Singapore and Indonesia. We curated these dishes based on research. The idea was to show the mirror image of both dishes based on how similar and different they may be. Some dishes were so similar that it didn't make sense to have two different dishes. Instead, we married them into one dish with both Portuguese ingredients and Asian aromatics. This is our poster for our inaugural pop-up event at Cozinha Popular da Muraria. We have organized smaller scale events and this is our first major pop-up event which can seat up to 60 diners per evening. This is the venue Cozinha Popular da Muraria on our setup day. We just arrived and you will see later how it will transform. As we get closer to the dates, we have to start prepping our dishes. Here's me prepping one of the dishes called sardine curry puff or apple apple sardine. As you can see, I'm slicing several onions to cater to our diners and I made about 60 curry puffs that day. Supporting local Portuguese farmers were important factors and we had to purchase them in bulk items for the event and so we sourced them from local markets, local producers and supermarkets for certain ingredients. As we are catering for a large number, we have to prepare the dishes a few days in advance. Prepping in advance helps to save time on the event day, especially when some dishes need to be served as fresh as possible. So a bit of planning goes a long way. Announcements were made on our meetup page along with details, the timing, menu and pricing. Next, we announced on our social media pages, contacted marketing companies to see if they might be able to help market our event and one of the publicity we received was from Lisbon Insiders, so thank you for that. As the event dates were getting closer, I was liaising with potential diners on queries and also chasing up on payments. Back to Cozinha, this is the menu for the evening and Ricardo will explain a bit more about them. It's two pastries. Mm -hmm. and then sort of black is a stir fry. And then two curries in one dish. And then the gelato. And then for dessert, and then is it five? Uh, but there are actually more than five. There are actually ten dishes. Ten? Yeah, technically. Because they are combined. Some of them are fused, some of them are mirrored. We have the old school menu on the board. 
Plus, you can scan the QR code for the menu. The first thing I did when we arrived was to make our signature iced tea blend with native Portuguese ingredients and Southeast Asian aromatics. This is served as a welcome drink when our diners are seated. So, it's about 5pm and 2 hours before service begins. That's us getting ready with extra hands. We have Ricardo's mom, Philomena, and Ploy in the kitchen the afternoon helping us. Ploy sautéing ingredients for Sotong Black, while Philomena's checking on the sopa de paish or caldo pescado. That's the caldo pescado done, which we will leave to cool down a little bit while Ricardo adds chicken to the ayam lemak curry and the guan curry which is next to the ayam lemak and that's Ricardo's family recipe. At the same time, staff from Gonzinyal came to lend a hand to arrange the tables. My good friend Drew from Sintra Farming Family arrives with his daughter and helped to sanitize the cutlery and glasses. Drew then gets ready to uncork a few bottles of wine and this is helpful because it makes it easier for us to serve especially when it gets really busy in the evening. open at 7 p.m. and we start serving around 7.30 p.m. Before guests arrive, we start to get the first dish ready. We reheated the soup and laid bowls. We quite often do get walk-in inquiries. People around the neighborhood would smell the aromas, come in and ask questions. It's usually either me, Ricardo, or even both of us will speak to the prospective diners and explain about our dishes, hoping they will join us for the evening. Service started about 7.45pm, so we decided to serve the caldo pescado dish first. Just before they finished the soup dish, we came in and say hello to everyone. We introduced ourselves, talked about the idea behind Luso Nusantara concept, shared some stories about the Portuguese sailors who intermarried local women, how they adapted using local in ingredients, and also spreading the culinary influences to their wives and the community. The second dish served was pastage de masa tenha with beef and oxtail meat, along with the epo epo sardine or the sardine curry puff, which went really well. The third dish, which was sotong black, served with vermicelli noodles. We serve it as part of the first main dish, and to be honest, this is my favourite dish. The final main dish, goan curry and ayam lemak. Ricardo's curry is more mild and sweeter in flavour, while mine is quite spicy. As you can see, we worked out a system to make plating and serving efficient. This is another favourite and I like it especially when both curry sauces mix together. It becomes another curry. It's a scoop of nata or cream gelato drizzled with kaya jam and crumbled Portuguese arreiache which looks similar to the Malay biscuit suji. Mm -hmm. 
At the end of the dessert, we came and say hello to our diners and interacted with them, asking if they enjoyed the meal and if they had any feedback. In general, we faced a few small situations but thankfully there were no hiccups during service. Everything was well prepared and well planned and it was all good. We had a great team and everyone got along well. I'm very thankful for everyone's help to be honest and I'll definitely do it again and hopefully in various venues. We also look forward to presenting more Luso Nusantara series in the near future. The crowd was interestingly more Portuguese than expats compared to my previous events at Cozinha. So thanks to all for attending, we have fun presenting and look forward to seeing you again in our next series. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video and thanks for coming this far. I hope you guys enjoy watching this week's episode. I'm now in Granada in Alhambra. I will share more of these videos in the next coming weeks. But thanks very much for watching and finding out how I've uh, you know done my events, this big events from the pre-event to the event day itself and the post-event. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you are in Lisbon, why not head up to meet up and come and join my Southeast Asian Supper Club and find out more about our events, uh, exciting events that coming, that's coming up in the uh, months. Uh, for the rest of you, don't forget to hit like, subscribe and the bell. Kiss me saying goodbye. I'll see you guys again soon. Take care and ciao ciao.